What's going on everybody? Good to see everyone back again. Thanks for tuning in. One of the chess sets that I showed you guys in the previous video, the larger chess set that was matte in color. It also came with a, a, a mouse pad board, black and white. As you can see here, 2.25 inch squares. It's not the biggest board, but it it is really nice. I am not really sure why they would include a board that's uh, black and white with black and white pieces. I feel like it would make a lot more sense if they used like one of these boards. This this is a board that I purchased separately. It's a uh, I think 2.3 inch. It's kind of an unusual or 2.37 mouse pad board. Uh, th this cost me literally like 10 bucks. I got it pretty quickly. So this this is a green board. The only thing that I love this board, but the only thing is I feel like the green is just a little too green. I almost feel like I want to take this and wash it so that the green becomes a little bit more faded. Just because to me, this is like striking green, okay? It also came with its own bag. It's very similar to the bag that I already reviewed for my other plastic chest set. Two compartments for the pieces. The center compartment that you see here is for the clock or it's maybe for a scorebook. Over here on top, you have the separate compartment. This is probably the compartment I would put my scorebook and all the information there. You have two little areas where you put your pencils or pens, obviously your little name tag. On the outside you have your handles and then you have the separate compartment here that you could put other things in. It has this separate detachable handle that you could swing across your shoulder, kind of like a strap. And that's about it. It came with a scorebook, 100 game scorebook, really cool. Shows you the uh, the event, the time control, or whether it was a 30 minute game or you know like a 25 minute game, the date, um, the result, who won, and then uh, over here on the bottom, as you guys have seen before probably, a little tiny board here where you can draw the exact position at which perhaps the game kind of took turn and you were really interested in trying to keep that specific position in the game memorable to you so that you, maybe you could go back and say this was exactly the move at which I want to go home and reanalyze the position so you could quickly you know draw the little pieces here and then go home and just look at that and say what I could have done differently at that point so it's a really nice book um, hardcover I'm really happy that I had the opportunity to get a book like this I don't keep a lot of score books I don't go to a lot of events nowadays but Next time I'll go to an event, I'll definitely bring the scorebook with me as, as a lot of the rated tournament events require require you to take notation. Okay, so that's one of the things that I wanted to show you guys that I forgot to show you last time. I've had some people say, yeah, you know, it might be time to consider getting the Barnes & Noble chess set refelted. I got the idea in my head and I thought, how hard could it be to refelt some chess pieces? The first thing that I did is I googled some uh, websites where it, basically what they'll do is they'll just basically send you the felt circles to your chess pieces and all you need to do is identify what size and presto, you know, you, you get your order of so many, like however many you need, whether you need the felt for all the pieces or whether you just need for some of them. The only downside to the websites that I saw was one, most of those websites were sold out. Two is that they only had limited sizes. They would say, you know, we only have like three and everything's sold out, you know, we can notify you next time we'll get, we'll get anything in. I know that, you know, green felt is very common. The felt on the bottom of these chess pieces can be of any color, any color that you guys prefer. It doesn't necessarily mean that green's the color that we need it to be. And not to mention, you know, the pieces themselves aren't green. A lot of times the boards that we're playing, they're not green. How hard would it be to just, you know, cut something like this out yourself, remove the old felt and just glue the old, the new felt on? I called House of Staunton some time ago when I was reviewing that Cambridge Springs chess set and I told you guys that it, the Kings came without the felt. They told me that what they do is they pretty much just take the Elmer's glue and just don't put too much on there and put it on there just 
because if you end up putting too much Elmer's glue and you put it on and you press it, some of that Elmer's glue is gonna come out the sides. It might just be messy. It's not, not that it's bad, but refelting them shouldn't really be that big of a deal. Like I think that anybody could theoretically just get some felt and go about refelting the pieces. I found Amazon to sell different felt um, fabrics. And I ended up getting this little sample. I think it's like 49 different colors. Very similar felt to what you would see on these plastic chess pieces, where you could see on the bottom, the felt that they have on here. Isn't very thick, but it gets the job done. And it seems like it's durable enough. So this video isn't necessarily a how to refelt. It's basically a video of me updating you on how far I've gotten as far as trying to refelt the pieces. And I'll show you what I did. First and foremost, I went to Amazon, like I said before, and I got this fabric set. I think it was like 49 different fabric pieces. They're not very big as you can see, but the reason why I got these wasn't necessarily to refelt all of my chess pieces in different colors, which, you know, wouldn't necessarily be bad. It would just look funky. However, when you're actually playing the game, it's not like you're seeing the, the felt on the bottom anyways. Either way, the reason why I got all this multicolor thing is that I just wanted to show you guys different colors that are available as far as what you can purchase. So once again, you're not being constrained on just choosing like dark green. You could choose pink, you could choose red, whatever you want. Personally, I would be more of a fan of uh, brown, kind of like this, since, you know, a lot of chess pieces are, are, are kind of brown. Or if you, if you look at this one, for example, and so I would feel like a brown color would, would probably go better than, than a green one in this particular situation. I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, cause I've seen some, I've seen some plastic chess sets somewhere with, where the felt was brown. I think at certain tournaments. So, but either way, like, you know, some people might want it to be, you know, a bright pink like this, while other people might want something like a, a, a very crimson red orange we have orange ones and uh, all kinds of different colors here so so the possibilities are endless in addition to that you could theoretically get some felt material that's not solid in color you could have it striped polka dot whatever you know whatever pattern you want it you want a tablecloth pattern as long as you can find it you can you can get it and then all you have to do is learn how to cut it out and take the old felt off and use that Elmer's glue and glue, glue the new felt on. If, if that's what you'd want to do to your, to your chest set, then by all means, you know, being creative is what it's all about. It cost me, I think $6 or something. It wasn't really expensive at all. Personally, my take on these little pieces here is uh, the fabric isn't super thick. This is one millimeter. And if you look at it, it's, it's not translucent, but if you hold it up to the light, it kind of is, okay? I've seen thickness of, you know, I've seen pieces of different thickness. There were two millimeter and then up to like a five millimeter. I wouldn't necessarily recommend a five millimeter because if you have, let's say this is a one millimeter. So let's say take five of these and imagine that we have a thickness that's pretty thick like that. It's possible that the pieces would be wobbly if it was that thick, but I would probably say somewhere in the range of two millimeters is what I would probably hope for as an ideal felt. And if I end up ordering more felt fabric, which I probably will, I will update you guys in one of my next videos and let you know how it worked out. Maybe I'll end up getting some really nice brown felt or something and, and get one of my chest sets completely redone and then be able to show it to you guys, okay? Then I ended up thinking, okay, so I got the little pieces of felt. What am I gonna do to cut, cut the circles out? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we can go about it. Number one, we can take the piece like this, okay? We, could, we can put the chess piece on top and you could use some kind of a, maybe a pencil or a pen or something and essentially draw out a circle, okay? You could do that. You could draw out a circle, then once you have your drawn circle, take little scissors, you know, like manicure scissors, scissors or whatever, and just cut the circle out. Remove the old 
fabric you could probably use either your nail honestly or you could maybe use some kind of uh, like a little knife or something get it underneath and between the, the the wood and the felt and just kind of carefully remove it you know being careful not to like scratch up the wood alternatively I thought to myself what would be an easier and more predictable approach so I saw this collection of little hole punchers okay uh, pink in color that's the only color they had so this one came as a collection of five okay starting from the very tiny holes that are bare they, they actually show you the size of the hole right here where you could see it in the in the gray so this one's barely barely maybe like a like a centimeter not even then you have the slightly bigger one so these two probably would just not be useful for us okay as far as any chess pieces unless your chess pieces were that small uh and if your chess pieces have a base that small they're probably they're probably not going to require any felt whatsoever they're probably going to be really light so that leaves us with with these and i thought to myself well i could give it a try and see what i could get out of this so this one i think it's about a one inch uh, this one's going to be a one and a half inch and this one's a two inch stamps essentially they're they're kind of like hole punchers just uh instead of the uh, three hole puncher they're one hole punchers the behind them you have this this compartment that basically whatever you stamp so when you press you have the the knife that goes in and out and it, it punches the hole and then you if you're doing paper or whatever you're doing you can have the holes fall into this little compartment on the underside and all you need to do is open this up get your little uh, circle and then close it back up so it just really depends on whether or not the circles is what you're needing or the holes so pretty easy to use on Amazon it was saying that these would be strong enough to make holes in, in all kinds of fabric felt and, and all kinds of stuff so I did use the big one and it turned out okay I had to really, really press hard to have a piece uh, come out like this. This is a two inch circle, probably going to be the size for like really, really large chess pieces, 4.4 inch di and uh, like two inch diameter would use uh, something like this. Otherwise, most other chess sets would probably never need something this large. Probably a 1.5 may, may be of, of more use. So if we take a 1.5, just like this, okay, and we, we feed the fabric in. This fabric is only one millimeter thick, just like that, and then, and then what we do is basically we just kind of press it together and then we squeeze the living daylights out of it. Pretty much you have to just put your entire weight on this, okay, and then it gets stuck, okay, because as you would assume, the the fabric is more than this little thing could handle so now we have a problem because it's too thick and the knife did not cut the entire the entire circle correctly now we have to basically end up with something that's not fully cut not fully cut not great see I tried it again and again and I tried different sizes and it's just not that, not that usable. Even though on the things here, let's try it again. That's about it. That's about it, guys. It doesn't work really well. Once again, got stuck. And then we didn't get a full cut. We didn't get it. We got a cut here and a little bit on this side, but not a full cut. You know, you close this, I, I think, and my kids are gonna probably love this little set. I think this is something for paper or maybe some kind of cardboard that would be more easy to cut, not for felt. So, like I said, when I put in the search something to cut felt, this came out multiple times and, and eventually I thought, okay, well, I think the description says it'll cut through different fabrics. So I thought to myself, I'll get it. It wasn't expensive, maybe like $20, not even it's useless for for felt anything that this is considered the thinnest felt probably for the chess pieces it's not working for this 
the small this one actually did cut before for me so uh, I'm surprised it's not cutting now maybe I pressed hard enough and and it cut through but the problem is the smaller ones they're not gonna work at all because because they'll start the smaller the circle yeah there we go the smaller the circle the quicker the quicker it'll pull in the sides of the fabric so so yeah the tiny ones might be able to cut but the tiny pieces is not what we are looking for you know if we can cut a really tiny little circle and even then things start to you could tell that the, the sides of the fabric are going in and you know it's really kind of very unpredictable the way that the whole situation works so that's one of the one of the things not to purchase just kind of you know take it from me um you you know you you pretty much would waste your money if you wanted to to make felt circles for chest sets with these with these uh, little two hickeys so let me go ahead and set these aside so alternatively i have this which is a little tiny um cutting device basically the way that it works is you have the the center little sharp point right over here and you have a little knife a little knife edge right over here the knife is replaceable uh, all you have to do is unscrew this part here all the way and the, the screw will come out the other side you remove everything you take the knife out and you put a brand new one in and in the set this knife came with a little tiny cap that you can put everything back in so once you're done using it, you put it together like this. You stick this back into its protective sheath so nobody gets accidentally poked or hurt. And then over here on in this compartment, you see that there is extra blades. So if your blade gets dull, all you have to do is pop this open. And on the inside, you see that they provide you, I think, with like... 10 more blades or something um, all you have to do is just you know I'll replace the old one with the new one and and go from there sounds like a perfect deal okay and then once you're done just pop it back in and uh, there you have it okay so the way that this would work is you would need to know what the radius, meaning halfway point, from the center to the outer part of the circle that you're gonna be making. You might know the diameter of your piece, and if you know exactly the diameter of your chest piece, then the radius would be half of that. And then basically, you make a circle. This particular device had a little, a little tiny pad that you could put in case you didn't want there to be a hole in the middle of your uh, felt circle. But honestly, what happened is when I would put the pad on here and I would start rotating the fabric as I would hold this still, the because the pad isn't you know secured in exactly the center, it didn't make a circle. It made like an oval because the pad would like slide around. So no, you would probably just need to use the little pointy end over here without using the pad even though it shows that you know you could use the pad and so what I did is I used this to make some circles I'm gonna just get a surface so I don't, I don't you know destroy my boards get a piece of felt whatever it is that you want so let's say we're getting this light sienna light brown here and then you would need to measure out what is the radius of the circle that you need and then you go from there basically what you would do is I'm holding it wrong here I, I, I like to hold it this way just start rotating the the material start rotating the felt around while holding the just like this okay and after a few rotations just gotta make sure that everything's completely been cut out and you got your circle. The key here would be with this particular tool is that you would just need to be able to determine exactly what the diameter of all of your pieces is and then set the the radius, which is half of the diameter, set the radius to uh, exactly where you need it to be. 
if you've determined the diameter to be exactly what the piece is, then it should fit very nicely on your piece. If, if you're a little bit off, what ends up happening is it may look like it, it's exactly where it needs to be. However, when you set the piece down, you will actually be able to see the felt on the outside. And sometimes, if it's just ever so slightly bigger than the piece, then it will show. Which is a good thing and maybe not so good thing. Some people like to have a little bit of the felt show, while other people like to have it be within the confines, so when the piece is standing, you normally don't see the felt. So it's I feel like in some pieces it's one way, and some chess pieces it's the other way. What I don't like to see is when you have certain chess pieces and the felt has been glued off center. So on one side you don't see the felt, but on the other side you see a little bit more than you need to. Because that can be distracting. For some reason, for me, that can be distracting. I would much rather have it be outside of the confines of the piece, but not be off center, um, than to, to have it off center, okay? So how would I go about determining exactly the diameter of every one of my pieces? Well, if you have a set, you could probably do a trial and error and a couple of times, just like I did with these blue pieces here, all I did is I made a couple of circles and, I, and then I realized that they were a little bit bigger than what I want to, to see. Once again, they weren't terribly off, but they were off just enough to where I could see I could see the felt on the outside. So all I did is carefully unscrewed the unscrew the, the, the tightening screw over here and pushed it just enough, just barely, and then you know tighten it back up. It's all you know, it's all eyeballing it, I guess you could call. And then, you know, I did it again, I tried it again. And I think after four circles, I finally found exactly the size that, that would be perfect. So in this particular case, it was just perfect enough to where it was not uh, looking outside of the piece. So it was just right. If you didn't want to waste all that fabric, you could get something that I've shown you guys before. This would this is called Dr. Meter. And you could identify exactly what's gonna be the diameter of every piece, whether you want it in millimeters or in inches. So if, if the diameter of this piece, for example, it's 31 and a half, 31.55, there we go, 31.55 or 56 actually, 31.56 uh, millimeters. So the halfway point would probably be 15 and a half, 15.75, 15.75 would be the halfway point. So all you'd need to do at this point is find that 15.75 or right around there. Yep, here we go. So this is theoretically the halfway point. Now we have our little paper, we cut a circle. Just like we did before, okay. That should be it. Pop the circle out, get her a little piece, and pretty good, pretty good. Now we got it to right where we need it. It's not sticking out, it's, but then again, it's, it's, it's a matter of preference because sometimes people like the circles to be ever so slightly smaller so that it's not exactly to the boundaries of the piece. Here we go. But you know, if, you, if it's a little bit tinier, then some people like it that way so that you don't see as much of the felt around the piece as it stands on, on your board. Um, still, you'd have to have a little bit of trial and error. So here we go. This it was the king from the Barnes and Noble. And look at the felt on the bottom of this. Can you guys see the just how thin that felt is? And so we can literally get underneath here just like this with our nail and pretty much just, it's like a sticker, it's so thin. It's very thin, see? Just like that. And there's your little piece of weight inside. See, look how, look how, look how, how thin this, this little piece is. It's just like a little piece of paper. And you could just basically 
kind of eyeball it and say, okay, I think the center is going to be right around here. Set your, 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 uh, problem is doing all this by hand. Kind of tricky. There we go. Cause you have, you almost need three hands here to do this. Or you just have to be, I don't even know if I'm screwing it in right. Here we go. So I did screw it in right. So let's, let's imagine that this is going to be the halfway point. Let's give it a try. We hold the, the device here with one hand. Don't move the device. Just start by moving the fabric. Okay. There we go. Keep moving the fabric. It's going to start by cutting on the surface. Slowly, it'll progress through cut, cutting through the rest of the fabric. You want to try to make sure that the only thing that's moving here is the fabric. That it's moving around and everything else stays stationary. You want to stop doing that when you don't hear any more cutting. When you're basically just like this and everything's good. Okay, so now we have the circle. Now we just take our king that we had before and then we find your Elmer's glue or whatever the case is, whatever glue you choose to use and you got a new base, a new base to your king. Not that I'm going to be using this particular color, but here we go. It's nice and relatively thick, much thicker than it was before. If we use it on a wood surface, it's very nice. It's not hitting, it's not scratching anymore. If you look at my previous video, this was definitely scratching it. And when you hit it, it would sound like this. But now, very nice. If you're going to play these Barnes & Noble pieces on a wooden board, I definitely would suggest getting some kind of felt for the bottom. And I mean, honestly, just like with the other pieces that I've seen, you could get a felt that's not entirely to the, to the very dimensions of the piece and you could still get away with it because if you did that, you could tell that now it's better. Compared it to the old felt, watch. And now with the new felt, and it slides better. Old, new, much better. So does it make sense to refelt your chest sets? Well, it just depends. If your chest sets are, are worth something to you and you don't necessarily you know, want to get new chess sets and or if it's an expensive chess set, I would say, yeah, definitely, by all means. The real question would be, where do you go about to, to do that? Like, do you send the, pie the pieces in? And if you do, you know, it's something to consider. You're going to have to pay extra for the shipping, handling. You're not sure if your pieces might get damaged in transit. Uh, would you take that risk? You know, especially if it's an old set or if it means something to you, you may want to do things at home. Okay, so... So I thought to myself, wow, this is this little guy here is the solution. This little doohickey is going to be able to make life so much easier for a lot of people out there. And it's perfect. Okay, it's perfect. Well, the reality of the fact that this six or seven dollar cutting thing is not perfect. And the reason why it's not perfect is because the little knife, the little exacto knife uh, that you see here, it gets dull pretty quickly. Uh, in fact, it got dull after cutting about five circles, so that sucks. You have to, after cutting about five circles of the felt, I guess the knife dulls up, and then it doesn't cut really well. And then what it does is it starts pulling on, on the fabric, so you have to end up taking it out, just like this. You have to remove the little knife, and you have to get yourself a new one. And you have to make sure you don't lose any of these because if you have dogs or cats or whoever, especially dogs or little kids, you can't have these little guys laying around anywhere. You just have to make sure that you account for every single one of these little knives 
or otherwise somebody's gonna get in trouble. So not really ideal by any means. Um, what you end up doing is just put it, put it back in. Super easy to replace. If it was just super easy and, and the knives wouldn't get dull, this would probably be perfect. But then you just tighten this back on. Just like that. And now with a new blade in there, after you know, after your like five cuts, you can continue cutting and you can get the rest of the of the felts done. If it works well, it works well, but when it doesn't work well, then it, you know it, it can be frustrating. I ended up cutting myself today on, on the side of my finger here with this. Well, the reason why I ended up is that it was sitting on the table and then I accidentally knocked it over and I tried to catch it in midair and it, it cut me. So it's not like I was I cut my finger using it the way I was supposed to. I just didn't want it to fall to the floor. So, but yeah, it, it, it was pretty sharp. So it cut me uh, a little bit, not too much, but definitely not, you know, not the safest thing to use all in all. Definitely want to keep the, uh, you know, keep it in its sheath whenever you're not using it, okay? Like I said, $6 thing, it's not perfect by any means. Uh, I, I really wish the knives wouldn't dull so quickly. Other than that, the design and everything is perfect. Let me know, guys, in the comments below, like what you think about this whole process, whether if, if you've had some experience refelting your chest sets, what did you use? Did you end up just getting a bunch of felt and cutting circles? Did you use something along the lines of one of these? Did you use another device or did you just send your pieces in entirely somewhere and then the, somebody else refelted them for you? I'm just kind of curious as far as like what people have tried and what worked for them. So be sure to leave a comment below and let us know. I make these videos as a way to bring people together to spark interest in chess pieces and also to, to bring people together as a community to kind of help each other out. That's about it guys, that's about it for today. Thanks for sticking around once again. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, you know, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't done so uh, already, please subscribe to this channel and be sure to stay tuned for uh, more chest related videos, okay? See you guys next time, bye bye.